Hi everyone. So I haven't made a video since almost, what, two years? So yeah, I'm sorry for that. I've been quite busy dealing with some new troublemakers. But I'm back now, and I'm going to try to make more videos, because there are so many topics I want to explore, even though I have to admit making videos is quite challenging for me. So you probably don't recall, but last time me and my bi microphone were trying to present some type theory. And I wasn't very satisfied with the result, because I only gave one example, and it wasn't the best pick. So this time I would like to clarify a few things, and in the process we will even dive deeper. I'm afraid the previous video gave the impression that you need some very niche and esoteric languages like Lin to tackle type theory. But really that's not the case. Of course it's easier with languages designed for this, but as long as the language has a powerful enough type system, you can already do quite a lot of things. Therefore, in this video, I've decided to use TypeScript, mainly because it's very popular, so I hope it will make the video more accessible. However, for those of you that don't know TypeScript, don't worry, I'll try to explain everything as clearly as possible, so I hope that you're excited, and without further ado, let's get started. While TypeScript's type system is powerful, it lacks a lot of features. And we will be limited to constructive propositional logic. Ok, what does all that mean? Well, before anything, let's take a step back and talk about logic. That will clarify a lot of things we'll be doing later on with TypeScript. Ok, so enough already. What is logic? Logic is the science of deductive reasoning. In other words, it's just a tool that helps us to come to conclusions given a set of assumptions. For example, let's consider the following statements. If Mario eats an ice flower, he can shoot ice balls. Mario eats an ice thrower. What can we now deduce? Well, we can deduce that Mario can shoot ice balls. This is what logic is all about. It's about deducing new statements from existing ones. Formally, we will name the statements with variables and use logic connectors to create more complex statements. We usually use letters, but we can use any symbol we like. This example is called the modus ponens. Now, what if we negate the second premise, that is, if we say that Mario did not eat an ice flower? What can we now deduce? You might be tempted to conclude that Mario cannot shoot ice balls, but that's not necessarily true. For instance, he could have a penguin suit. We cannot conclude anything from these statements. However, what if we replace the second premise with Mario cannot shoot ice balls? This time, we can conclude that Mario definitely did not eat an ice flower. This example is called the modus tollens. Modus ponens and modus tollens are what we call rules of inference. You can think of them as the rules of logic, telling you what are valid moves or valid deductions. What we've just done is propositional logic. All we have are propositions and logic connectors. We don't have any quantifiers like for all or they exist. For that, we need predicate logic. For those of you who know predicate logic, you might be wondering why would someone not use predicate logic, as it can express more things. And yes, in that sense, it is more powerful. However, propositional logic has a very nice property. It is decidable. That is, there is an algorithm that can tell you whether any statement is true or false. This is not the case for predicate logic, so yeah, it is more powerful, but that power comes at a cost. But in fact, the main reason why we will be doing some propositional logic here is because, as far as I know, TypeScript's type system cannot express predicate logic. Ok, but now, what is constructive logic? Basically, this is the same as classical logic, but some valid moves now just became invalid. For instance, we no longer have the law of excluded middle. In other words, that means that we can no longer assume that any statement is either true or false. Or, Equivalently, we can no longer simplify a double negation. When I heard about constructive logic for the first time, I did not understand at all the point of removing these rules. Like, surely, any statement must be either true or false. But what I didn't understand at that time is that constructive logic is reasoning about something different than truth. What we are now interested about is probability. We are not saying that some statements can be neither true nor false but that we cannot prove nor disprove some statements. Sadly, constructive logic is often seen as a weird and useless subset of classical logic, but it is actually pretty useful, specifically for proof assistance. 
There are yet a lot of other logics like modal logic or minimal logic, but to simplify, here's a table of the logics we've talked about. And again, what we'll be doing is constructive propositional logic. Okay, back to TypeScript. For those who don't know, TypeScript is just JavaScript with types. Let's consider this very simple JavaScript code. When you run it, your computer will follow its instructions step by step. First, it will start with the first line, which seems to get an user, somehow. Then the computer will move on to the next instruction, which checks if the user age is at least 18. Let's assume it is. Finally, the computer will execute the next line that prints a message. So the program is now done and it seems to be working fine. However, there are branches in this code our current runtime never took. What if there is a bug somewhere in there? Let's rerun the code with a different user. For the first two instructions, nothing changes. However, the program now outputs this buggy message. It was supposed to print the username, but printed undefined instead. Oh, and that's the moment when you realize the username field is actually called name. So you fix it, we run the code, and bam, bug fixed. On the other hand, TypeSuite proceeds in two steps. Before even starting following the first instruction and jumping on the code, it will first analyze the code as a whole in a process that is called static analysis. During that step, TypeSuite will make a lot of checks to find potential bugs. One of them is type checking. It will assign types to all the variables and make sure they are all used correctly. In our example, it will notice that the user's variable type doesn't contain a username field. This feature is very powerful because it allows us to catch bugs before even running the code, and so we don't need to try every possible scenario to find them. What interests us with TypeScript is only the static analysis. If you remember the last video, we saw that types can be seen as logical propositions, and that their inhabitants can be seen as proofs of these propositions. So what we will do is encode our propositions in TypeScript types, try to make objects of these types, and use the static analysis to check if our proofs are correct. Let's dive into TypeScript. To start, we need to represent propositions as types. First, consider the boolean true. We will represent this proposition with a type of the same name. Since we want it to be provable, it should have at least one possible value. We can achieve this by making it an alias of a number type, for instance. Now if I want to demonstrate true, I can create a variable of that type and assign it a value, say 0. Next, let's represent false. This is more challenging as we want it to be impossible to instantiate this type. A recursive definition helps here. With this type, in order to represent false, you need an object that contains the field of the type false itself. This makes it impossible to represent false. Now let's tackle logical connectors. For n, we can use an object with fields of type a and b. This means you can only instantiate the n type if you have values for both a and b. For or now, we want to be able to instantiate the type if we have a value for either a or b. Moving on, in my previous video we discussed encoding implications using functions. Simply put, an implication is a function from a to b. Equivalence, on the other hand, is true if both A implies B and B implies A hold. We can use our previously defined end type and apply implications in both directions. For negation, we'll need to use the constructive logic definition. In constructive logic, not A is expressed as A implies false. This means that if A exists, there is a contradiction. Finally, we will assume a very important action that lets us derive anything from a contradiction. This is called the principle of explosion. Now the exciting part begins. You can ignore this bit of code, this is just to simplify the syntax by having global type variables. Let's use our types to represent the body exponents, that is, given a implies b and a, then b must follow. What's really awesome here is that we don't need to assume it, we can prove it. Since body exponents is an implication, we need to start with a function that accepts the premise. Now that we are inside the function, we need to prove b and return it. First, we can decompose the premise into a and a implies b. And using a as an argument to the function a implies b, we get b. That's it, the proof is done. Here, TypeScript type system guarantees our proof's validity. Next, body students. 
Given A implies B or not B, then not A must follow. After having decomposed our premise, we now need to prove not A, and this time it doesn't seem obvious. We need to remember that not A is a function from A to false, so let's assume A and now try to prove false. Again, by combining A and A implies B, we derive B. With both not B and B, we can produce false, and there's our proof. Proving theorem this way is really fun. I don't want to present too many examples here, and instead here is a list of propositions I want you to try proving by yourself. In case you get stuck, you can check the description of this video to find the solutions, but you really should try to solve this by your own, because this is the best way to really understand. For those of you that prefer classical logic, there is also something you can do. You just need to assume the law of exclusive middle like so. Finally, I want you to note that type switch type system is unsound. If you try hard enough, you will manage to produce contradictions like this one. I encourage you to pause and ponder why this one works by the way. If you're serious about theorem proving, you will eventually need to explore better suited language like Lin. <laughs>